Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're making terracotta pots. So this will be a full game asset creation workflow, but on a very basic, simple level. So it should just about be suitable for beginners, but I would suggest that you've been through some of my beginner courses and some of the basic modeling exercises. It also helps if you looked at the UV unwrapping exercises and know a tiny bit about nodes. So if you've got all that information, then you're ready to begin this. So here's the finished result. We've got a bit of moss on there as well. And I'll show you a couple of techniques to do this, trying to keep it as simple as possible. So the first thing to do is to model our objects. Now there's nothing too complicated here. If I go into edit mode, you can see that they're very simple and very basic. So have a go at making each of these yourself. This is the simplest one, so start there perhaps. Then move on to this one. And then perhaps this one's the hardest. If you're having trouble with those, then try out my beginner exercises. So hopefully that wasn't too taxing. I'll go through the creation of this simple one here. I'll just quickly move this one backwards, G then Y, and Shift C will move my cursor to the center, and I can press Shift A or come up to the Add menu up here, Shift A and Mesh Cylinder. Now because this is a low poly game asset, we need to think about the vertices around our cylinder. So I'll zoom into my cylinder a bit more. That's with period key on my numpad. And it's probably over detailed for what we need for a game object. This one has 32 vertices. These ones have 20, which may still be a little bit high, depending on where you want these games to go. These three have a combined face count of below 1000 faces. So we're trying to keep the face count down because that will take more processing power and therefore we won't get good frame rates within our game engine. So let's reduce this to 20. And you can see that's changed the amount around the outside. And now I can start editing it. I'll press GZ1. That will grab it in the Z axis, one blender unit, so it moves onto the floor. I'll go into edit mode with tab on my keyboard and I'll start editing my shape. So first of all, I'll press G to grab and Z to constrain it to the Z axis and move it up slightly. So it's the right height. Now I'm going to press S to scale that face and scale it outwards. And maybe I'll do the same with the bottom. So I'll select the bottom face, S to scale, and scale that outwards as well. Now we want a lip going around the top so I can control R to create one of these loop cuts. I can use my wheel if I wanted to create more, but one is fine for the moment. Left click and move it upwards, somewhere around there. Three to go back to face mode because loop cuts put you into edge mode. And I want to select this face loop around here. Now have a quick think, how do I select face loops? Well, like I say, I'm in face mode and I press Alt left click on one of the edges going across the loop that I want. So there I've selected my face loop. Let's E to extrude and then S to scale. And you can see it's scaling the Z axis as well, which I don't want. So I press Shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z axis and it will only scale in the X and Y. So about out to there and that's all looking fine. And the last thing to do is sort of dig out the middle. So I'll scale this in slightly and extrude with E in the Z axis, pull it down, and you can see it's coming out of my pot around there, so I'll scale it in around there. It doesn't have to be super accurate. You won't really notice the insides that much anyway. So there's a really basic pot. So back into object mode with tab, right click, shade smooth. Now it looks a bit strange at the moment, but that will look fine when we start texturing. To make a more complex pot like this, we start with a cylinder, Shift A to add, mesh cylinder. I'll go slightly quicker this time. Still got 20 vertices. I'll grab in the X axis, so it's next to my other one. GZ1 to move it above the floor, into edit mode with tab, and then grab the top face and pull it upwards. Now I can do a very rough shape, so Control R to do a loop cut, bring that down, and scale it out for that section. Control R, create a loop cut there and scale it in. I need to create one at the top as well, so Control R, and I've got my loop cut at the top there for the lip. Now it looks strange at the moment, but if I select this edge loop with Alt left click, I can then press Control B and I can bevel. And if I use my mouse to increase the bevel, I can create a curve. Now the other one's a bit wider, so I can just scale that up, maybe Shift Z so it doesn't scale in the Z axis and I've got a curved outline there. So think about how I can do this shape here. So I need to select that edge loop there, Control B to bevel again, and again I can use my wheel depending on how much detail I want. 
maybe about two, but remember, you're thinking about the output and whether it needs that amount of detail. So around there looks good, possibly a bit high poly, but it shouldn't make too much difference. Last thing is to create that lip at the top, so interface mode with three, select the face loop, E to extrude, scale, shift Z so it doesn't go in the Z axis, and we've got our sort of lip. You can see I've got a slight curve to my lip there, so I could do another loop cut, control R, and scale that out, but do remember the poly count. Top face with three, select that face, scale it in, and extrude in the Z axis, E then Z. And I'm not gonna bother with the inside faces to match up precisely with these, because you won't see them, so I've just gone all the way down there. Now what you need to be careful, you can see it's just touching the outside face there. So with my bottom face selected, I can just scale it in, and now there's no overlap. So there's a slightly more complex shape, right click, shade smooth, and we've got a similar output here. Okay, so once you've done the modeling, the next stage is to do the unwrapping of the model, ready for 2D textures to be placed upon it. So I'll take my simple basic one to start off with and think about unwrapping it. I'll isolate it with forward slash on my numpad, and that's isolation mode. You just press forward slash to come out of that, and it's really handy to get rid of everything else in your scene. So when you're unwrapping an object, you have to think about it in two dimensions. So much like a jumper has seams, and it's all made from one piece of kind of 2D cloth, as we might say, and then stitched together to give it some sort of volume, we're doing the same thing with this pot. We've got to split it up and place it in areas on our 2D texture. The best place to do this is in the UV editing tab. So we'll come across to there. And I'm not in isolation mode anymore, so I'll press forward slash on my numpad so I can go back to it. And you can see it's already got some sort of unwrap here. And that's when you first make a cylinder, Blender makes an automatic unwrap. If I select all, you can see all the shape, but it's not taken into account any of my editing. So it's really best not to use this at all. As soon as I unwrap it, it will write over this and move all these vertices around. So what we are seeing here is different areas of the shape mapped onto this 2D area. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now the really easy and quick way is to select all, press U, and then Smart UV Project. It's always a good idea to put your island margin up a little bit, maybe to 0 0.06, and then press OK. And you can see it's split it up into lots of different sections. Now although this is effective, it's not really the best way to do it, but if you want to be quick and easy, then the Smart UV Project is the best way. Now one thing, if you do get an error message down here saying object has non-uniform scale, if I just quickly go into object mode with tab and press N on my keyboard to get my toolbar up, mine hasn't got non-uniform scale, it's all set at one. That's because I did all my adjustments in edit mode. So my scale actually never changed. The dimensions changed, but not the scale. If for any reason these are different numbers down here, you'll need to press Control A and apply your scale. I can press this now, it won't make any difference to me, but to you, if these were different, they'll be set to one now. It won't make any difference to the shape, it will just change the scale. Then when you come to unwrap, you won't get that error message. So what is a better way of unwrapping this? Well, we need to actually define where we want the shapes to be cut up. I think a good place would be at the top here, so I'll select this edge loop. Oh, I need to be in edge mode, so I'll select edge mode, Alt left click, and select that edge loop around there. And I want to mark that as a seam so that it's gonna be an island inside here and an island outside here. Remember, think about scenes on your jumpers or t-shirts. We call them jumpers in the UK. You probably call them sweaters in America. But anyway, let's mark a seam across there. So Control E to get to the edge menu. You can find the edge menu up here as well, but Control E is the quick way, and then mark seams. And that highlights a sort of orangey red. So we've got a seam. So let's try unwrapping that. So I'll press U to unwrap. And instead of Smart UV Project, we we'll use the actual Unwrap. Now this looks quite strange, we've got two circles. And at first it's tough to understand, but if you think of a Coke can that has been squashed flat, so as I look at it from the top here, it's kind of similar to the shape we see there. So it's not a particularly good unwrap at the moment. What sometimes can be helpful is to press this button over here, which is UV Sync Selection. If I press that, and then select faces, I can then select some faces in here to see where they are on my model. So if I select this inside face, you can see it's quite a big area here, but it's taking a small area up on my UV map. And it would be much better if this was a big area. Not that we can particularly see the inside, but we can split this up a lot better and utilize all this empty space that's not being used over here. 
So let's try marking a seam all around this. So I've selected it, Control E, Mark Seam. And now we've got a seam around there. Now when I press U to unwrap, I can tick this box Live Unwrap. So every time I mark a seam, it will just unwrap it automatically. So I'm going to tick that. And for some reason, we do actually have to do the unwrap again the first time we tick it. And that's gone a bit strange because I didn't have everything selected. So let's try that again. A to select all, U to unwrap, and unwrap. That's better. So it's not much better. It's taken that inside circle and put it over here. And it's given us more texture space for that circle. But we've still got this sort of stretched idea here. So have a quick think about this area and how we can unwrap it a bit better. And maybe think about a label that goes around a baked bean can or Coke bottle or something like that. So yes, labels are from one piece of paper that was at one point flat. It's wrapped around and it has a seam down the side. So if I select these two edges here and here and press Control E, mark seams. Now we can see on that live unwrap, it's unwrapped it and we're taking up much more texture space for this area here. What we'll need to do is the same for the outside. So let's select that bottom face and press Control E, mark seams. Now, even though I've selected a face, it has actually selected all the edges around the outside and therefore I can use the mark seams function. So we're still getting this squashed look. So again, we need that sort of Coke bottle label idea going around here. So we will need one seam down the side. It's always a good idea to put your seams on the same side. So if you ever want to hide them, I go to edge mode, we can put this seam maybe at the back of the object when we place it. So I've got those selected, Control E, mark seam, and watch what happens in the UV editor. It turns into this space here. So we've got all those side faces and the sort of top lip up here, and we've got them in a much better line. Now there are techniques to straighten these out and tidy them up slightly, but I'm not going to worry too much about that, and I'm going to keep things a bit basic for now. A quick tip though, you can select faces here and move them around with G, scale them up with S, and maybe utilize the space a little bit better than how it's been laid out so far. If you want to select all of these faces, you can press L for link select, grab, and maybe scale up. Be careful not to go over the edges though. If you need to scale in small increments, hold down shift. Okay, so that's the modeling and unwrapping. In the next episode, we'll be texturing with some terracotta textures and some moss in the form of decals. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.